Hello, Africa. Welcome to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices Show. This is the show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. How have you been? I am so happy and excited to be meeting you once again this week. And remember, it's WCW, Women Crushing Wednesday. So if you've not taken the time to appreciate that woman who is doing so much, please, we still have got time, do that. Send a text message, make a call through, whichever way, just appreciate the woman, okay? Right, this show is probably brought to you by very responsible brands. And first on the list is Chanashito. Chanashito is Ghana's number one pepper sauce. And if you've not tried it, I encourage you to try it. Pick up their number from the base of your screen and ensure you even engage in much more business with her. That product really moves. So if you want to have an extra income stream, I will suggest Chanashito because it will really move. And we also have got Leap Tomato Mix. Leap Tomato Mix is making it possible for Ghana to have the best of the best jollof rices. If you want to prepare any dish that has got to do with tomato paste or tomato mixes, I need you to choose Leap and you'll be telling a different story. Trust me, I use it. A lot of people who have started using it all have got testimonies, very good ones about it. And then my outfit was proudly put together by Afaiwa Styles. Afaiwa Styles always ensures that I look really good. And this particular outfit she put together for me because we laid to rest one of my colleagues, Dr. Khan, over the weekend. And uh, we say, may his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen and amen. So if you want any kind of contemporary ladies and gents outfit, we are asking you right now to look up Afaiwa Styles on Instagram and Facebook styles, and you see different styles and even in the sizes you never expected. All you need to do is get there, fit it into it. If it works for you, you're on the go. So nothing like having a designer telling you stories about, oh, no light, oh, I couldn't do this and all, of, all of those things. She's just going to get you to check it off. Make sure you get there with the phone number at the base of your screen and tell her that you heard about her on the African Women's Voices show. Awo, thank you so much for my braids. It's so lovely. Find Awo on Instagram and Facebook at Awo's Hair and you can pick up her number right now at the base of your screen. So we talked to you earlier this week. They're going to have a very special woman gracing our studios today. And she is here looking as bubbly and as beautiful as ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join me as we make welcome Madame Joyce, are you welcome, Auntie Joyce? Thank you. I, I prefer the Auntie Joyce. You, you know, prefer? Ma mm -hmm. Madame makes me feel like um, my seventy. Oh, <laughs> I'm seventy plus, so Madame makes me feel like that. But Auntie Joyce makes me feel like you know, you know, you feel chic. I know. <laughs> All right, she wants I to know. feel chic, so please <laughs> refer to her as Auntie Joyce. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to have interesting conversations mm. and. Um, main on the on the conversation tonight has to do with domestic violence. A lot of us have heard so many stories about domestic violence and how it's affecting homes, especially in Christendom. A lot of people are silent in their homes because they feel that the Bible is against people leaving their marriages. Today, we have the executive director of Sword and Light Ministries, who is really grounded when it comes to the word. She's going to also open up to us around you know, the discussion and tell us her understanding of what the Bible actually means when it comes to domestic violence and what we should do as women or even men who are facing it in our homes. So let's kick off with the conversation. <laughs> and we are live on Facebook, okay? So if you have any questions around it, please do not hesitate to send it, you know, to our uh, Facebook page. And I'm going to get to ask her that question around domestic violence. So let me commend your outfit. Oh. Uh, uh, it's really, really pretty. And <laughs> did you say Afariwa? Afariwa style. It's very, very nice. Oh, very nice. So thank you. Yeah, my birthday is coming up next year, so she can consider <laughs> oh, sure. doing something for me. She will but I can have it. an early birthday too. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so Afariwa, I hope you've heard it. All right, so let's do that you know what we usually do yes let's not tell her what we do yes, uh -huh. yes. it's so pretty it's so pretty it's a beautiful caftan thank you yes. so I much congratulations oh. and i tried the shito remember the last time i was the there chana shito. the chana shito i tried and it was good it was good it was so good you, see, you gave me a mild adult. one even though i eat very hot pepper oh wow so, so you eat 
a lot more spicy one. Like a ganyobi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I eat, I eat very spicy. Oh, wow. Mm. Beautiful. So, please, we have to take note. Uh, <laughs> let's increase the spices, especially for, for me. Yeah, yes. for Auntie Joyce. Right. Okay. Mm. All right. So, let's go into the conversation yeah. around mm. domestic violence in homes, especially in the homes of Christians. Because of what is said, uh, women should be submissive in their marriages. A lot of them end up feeling that submission has to do with the fact that um, they should keep quiet and just stay and listen to what the man says. Is that really what it means no, to be submissive? No, no. To begin with, when God talked about marriage, you know, he said in the book of Genesis that the man, it was not good for the man to be alone. So he was going to create a woman who is suitable for him. I know in the old English, it says uh, a woman meets. Some people think it's a, a mate. No, a woman suitable for the man. Obviously, if the woman is suitable for the man, <laughs> no beating <laughs> is part of it. Yeah. So domestic violence is a no-no. God does not accept it. Now, when it comes to the submission part, when you're reading the book of Ephesians, where you find it, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22, the 21 says, and we should submit to one another. True. Submit to one another. Then it talks about a woman submitting to her own husband. But you see, it also says the man should love his wife the same way that Christ Jesus loved the church and gave his life for her. Mm -hmm. So the man is supposed to love the woman and actually love sacrificially. The portion even goes on to say that Every man loves himself. So when you love your wife, it's like you're loving yourself. And since no man beats himself, how do you then beat your wife? People have anger problems, you know. And uh, so this anger pushes them to use their fists and so on. It's, it, that is not what the Bible says. What the Bible talks about, even when it says, I hate divorce, says the wife of your youth. It means you've married a woman and then later on maybe you find another woman and you discard her. During Jesus' time, uh, the, the Pharisees came and asked, you know, is it right to divorce? Jesus said, no, it is until death do you part. And then they said, oh, but Moses allowed us to do it. So Jesus said, it's because you were stubborn. Mm -hmm. However, when God proposed marriage, it was to be for a lifetime. So there are deeper issues. Sometimes, even when we're dating, the man is violent. Why would you want to marry the man when even whilst you're dating, he's violent? Problem with a lot of us women is that we seem to think we can change people. A lot of times. You know? Um, but ours is not to go into a marriage thinking that we're going to change the partner, the, the spouse, into somebody that we want. So I would say, no, God is against it. God does not like it. And I have heard stories where reverend ministers have talked more to the woman than even to the man, asking the woman to submit but never talking to the man that, look, you're supposed to love her so unconditionally mm -hmm. and so sacrificially that you are even willing to give your life for her. We, I, I haven't heard any of them talking like that. So it's, every time it's the burden on the woman. That story is told about a woman who was having these episodes. The man was extremely violent told the parents, the parents says, oh, it's okay, you know, things will change, go back. There was a time she even packed her things, went home, she was sent back. And then, long story short, they were living in a block of flats, I think third floor. 
and in the beating pushed her over. Oh. She died. Oh. I don't know the rest of the story, but you know, so <coughs> the man becomes a murderer. The children become orphans, literally. Mother dead, father in prison. Is that what we want? Yeah. No. So we really, I'm glad now that um, the church, even the church is recognizing the role of clinical psychologists and taking counseling beyond just uh, don't do it, they don't do that, to looking at psychological issues. Because it's only a psychological issue that will lead a man to actually beat his wife. Even parents, a parent who is so violent, a mother who's so violent on the child, a father who's so violent on the child, has a psychological problem. You know, so these are issues that we need to discuss. How can God, who is a loving God, want a husband to beat his wife? That, that is not possible. Okay, so in other words, uh, what are we saying to the women who are facing this as victims right now? If you are in a home, a Christian home, and you're facing various forms of domestic abuse, what should we do? First and foremost, you should report this to your parents. If it gets too violent, you report it to the police. You report it to the police because there has to be some restraint. There has to be some restraint. Now, if you're beaten, you know, to pulp, it, it, it's, it's not good. And I, mean, I know incidents. I remember um, some children who, whose mother, well, whose stepfather was beating their mother. So the children actually confronted their mother and said, you know, it's either us or the stepfather because it doesn't make sense that you'd have children and you are always being beaten, your face is always puffed up and so on and so forth. And it's not even as if the, the stepfather was living in the same home with you. He has other relationships. You know, he has other wives. And so it, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. No woman should accept domestic violence. If it happens first, you probably think the man is too um, angry. Happens twice, happens three times. You can't accept it for the sake of your health and for the sake of the man. You see, because if you continue to accept it, one day he beats you and kills you and he's become a murderer. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would like? No. So I think that the church is now taking these things seriously. And I know other institutions, other female, uh, female organized institutions that are also even making room for domestically abused wives to move away from the home and go to a shelter, a shelter where you're provided with care and so on. If the marriage is... Um, um, is dealt with and later on you go home after counseling for the man also because the man needs to be helped to overcome the anger problem that would make him violent. So please don't stay. You know when Osinachi died, yeah. it became such a big issue but a lot of people have been <laughs> suffering it here, right here in this country. You know, and I'm sure in Nigeria also. Yes. So it's a good thing that the Osinachi thing became such a major issue and that it was located even in the church where reverend ministers had to come and explain why they knew but didn't do anything about it. You know, so I think God wants us to deal with it. If, if he didn't, the Osinachi case would not even be a church matter. Mm. It, it was a church matter. And reverend ministers <laughs> found themselves on one side or the other. Of, I remember I saw a clip where her reverend minister was having to explain certain things. Yes. I, I don't think we should accept it. Okay. I don't think we should. Point well noted. We'll go for a quick commercial break. When we return, we get to ask 
Auntie Joyce about these pairings that go on in church. Sometimes we find out pastors pairing us up with certain people that they feel that, oh, this person is a good gentleman, she's a good lady. Uh, sometimes do they really contribute to this abuse that we experience? When we return, we'll talk about it. Do not go away. And we are back to the conversation here on ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Before I went on the break, I mentioned I was going to ask Auntie Joyce about these pairings that go on in church, where sometimes you find a pastor recommending a gentleman or a woman to another member, and then they get together, and before you know it, they are beginning to suffer issues because both of them really don't understand themselves, but because pastor has said that they are good for each other, they've accepted it and are hoping that it will be okay, and it leads to domestic abuse. Uh, as a minister of the word, what's your take on this kind of parents? You know, there, there's nothing really wrong in matchmaking. Mm. You know, uh, until we became, uh, you know, so, so certain, I mean, uh, until we became so liberal, even our grandparents were matchmaked. You know, because what happened was that you, uh, a family would sort of say, we would like to marry into this family, and then the, the children will meet together and marry. So matchmaking by itself can be good. However, in the olden days, you just didn't see someone and marry the person. Okay. You studied the person, you found out details about the family, the person comes from and so on if there are issues for example of domestic violence mm -hmm. in the home you'll be warned that uh, this house they, they beat their, their <laughs> this wives. house they beat their wives you know or they beat their husbands mm -hmm. you know <laughs> as, the <case laughs> may be. as the case may be so then you'd be told there's not a house to my even if you go and find the man and they start checking doing the due diligence they will tell you uh, this house has these issues and so on so don't don't go there even if your pastor tries to put the two of you together the marriage is not for the pastor mm. the marriage is to glorify god in the first place and it is between you and the person you've been paired with you need to get to know each other. I know that because of the recommendation of remaining pure before you marry, and therefore the discouragement of fornicating before you get married, some people rush into the marriage because they want to have sex. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can have the sex is within the confines, within of, the marriage. confines of the marriage. So you meet the person and maybe within a year you marry, you really don't know the person. You really don't know the person. And so some of these things uh, make it difficult for you to get to know each other. I think it is also wrong to make the pastor the person who determines the one you're going to marry. I think the pastor is only recommending and yes, we must give respect to our pastor. But what he's recommending, he's not forcing it on you. And you should have the boldness, woman or man, to tell the pastor, I don't think, you know, these are the things I have found. And, and, and we must also always involve our families in marriage. Everywhere in the world, marriage is between families in really communal societies. Marriage is between families. Marriage is not contracted outside of the family's knowledge. And I think that uh, in the Methodist Church, in the Anglican Church, in the, in the Presbyterian Church, I think in the Catholic Church, they will ask you whether, on the, whether you have actually performed the traditional marriage, mm -hmm. which then is the two families coming together before they even perform the ordinance marriage in church. All I'm saying, young ladies out there, young men out there, please respect your pastors. But do you know that 
your real master is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that your pastor is the under shepherd of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he too looks up to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, for redemption, for sanctification, for justification. So, even if the pastor recommends somebody to you, you must seek guidance from the Holy Spirit who is representing the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. You can't just say, pastor says, and just leave it like that. Because then you put a burden on the pastor. If it doesn't go well, would you take the man back to the pastor? I mean, you marry the guy, he starts beating you. I would take the man back to the pastor. pastor and say, Pastor, please, please say, take your man. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But most of us won't have the courage. And then we start saying, hey, I wouldn't have done it if Pastor had not said it. I don't think we should do that. Because you know something, and I'm talking from my own experience. If you truly allow God, He will guide you. And in the relationship, you see that God will be showing you signs. And sometimes you say, oh, you are in love. So the signs are there, and you fail to acknowledge them when maybe God is guiding you in a different direction. And that's why perhaps it's so good that you don't have sex before you marry. Because, you know, sex is also a spiritual thing. It's a certain spiritual bond that you are starting. So if you haven't done something like that, then walking away... It's a, lot it's a lot easier. A lot easier. So that's what I'll say. Okay. Me, if, if pastor gives me a husband and, and he beats me, I will take the man and actually go and give him back to pastor. That's what I will do. All right. So now we're going to be flipping the conversation from domestic violence to um, the attitude of Ghanaians. Because if you notice today, it rained and there was flood everywhere. And this is not the first time. Seven years ago, June 3rd, there was heavy rain and we lost a lot of lives. And this had to do with people's behavior. Time and time again, there has been publicity, there's been education as to how people ought to you know, dispose refuse, but people just decide to do the wrong things. The question now is, is it our system that is making people to behave the way they are? Or is it really an attitude we have just developed? Does this have anything to do with the institutions and the way it's not really working? So people are finding their own ways and means. And even if it means them doing whatever they have to do to get away with you know, crime, they just go ahead and do it. So what's your take on this? Our institutions or it's us? Cosmopolitanism always brings its own problems. You know, when we are living in smaller communities where we know one another, we become accountable to one another. So, uh, uh, you know, Mami Koshi's house knows Mami Akoshia's house. And Mami Koshi can tell a daughter like Ayoko, why are you behaving like that, you know? small communities, and then we, we do the right things. When we are so dispersed from each other and we don't owe anybody any explanation, it has its own problems. Having said that, the system also has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, must we continue to have open drains, okay. which makes it easy for people to throw things into the drains? Right. You know, I mean, storm drains like what? I mean, look at this. Yeah. Storm drains, the big storm drains, you know, maybe can even take a little more. But these little drains where, which get choked, the big storm drains don't get choked. But these little drains, they easily get they choked. choked. So one, that's a question. Even if we're going to have open drains, do we not have a system where we clean drains? I know the district assembly has a duty to take care of sanitation. So if there are drains to be cleaned, then the district assembly is the organization to, to make sure that this gets done. Now, does the district assembly do it at no charge? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And this is where the numbering that has happened is so important because now 
you know the street names, you know the houses, you know where people are, and we need to begin to collect our uh, lampo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to collect our lampo, where you, you make sure that ha every house pays a certain amount of money, which is used for some of these common things. And I think you can make it easier when you break it up into smaller clusters. Anytime I drive from home there, I see on the main road, there's a drain which is, is choked. And I'm wondering, and I, I would actually hold the household responsible. Because, you know, this new law, deal with your frontage. Mm -hmm. yes. So if the system is not doing it and there are no sanctions, believe me, if I do something and I can get away with it without any punishment, I will do it. You know, um, <laughs> in some of the uh, developed countries, somebody will be driving as soon as he sights a policeman, starts slowing down because he knows that the fine he will pay for breaking the traffic rule is so heavy. So we need to apply the sanction. It's not that they are not there. In the bylaws of the district assemblies and the municipal assemblies, the bylaws are there. Yeah. And there are sanctions for all the breaches. So the system has room for, uh, how shall I put it, for monitoring, for uh, charging people for doing the wrong thing and so on and we really should begin to do it I think that we also need to help one another mm. you know when we live close by if you leave your house and you see that your neighbor's house is choked I th there's nothing wrong walking to the neighbor's house and say you know I, I realize that this is choked you know because after all if if it gets choked it will affect it you will affect also me as well. mm -hmm. So we need to begin to do that. And this is why good neighborliness is also very important. You know, right now, a lot of us are living in self-imposed prisons. Our walls are taller than in Zawan prison. Mm. So Thank we you. don't even know each other at all. You know, sometimes we know the name of the neighbor, but we've never seen the person. We've never said hello to each other. And so even holding ourselves accountable and helping one another is also a problem. But I would say that one, we have an attitudinal problem because we get away with doing the wrong things and not getting punished. Two, the district assemblies can do far better than they're doing. They complain about money, but their system also allows them to raise money from the communities in which they are, and we should do that. Uh, number three, I would say that this idea of providing household bins is important. Of course, when you collect the garbage, there must be a place of disposal. Mm -hmm. And every community must have a place of disposal. Now, we're saying that in Accra, some of the places are choked. It's a good thing that Zoom Lion is doing some kind of recycling that no longer requires us taking the garbage to a dump. But all this is money, and we have to make sure that Zoom Lion is also resourced to, to do it well and that every community have this recycling facility. Now, if we're going to do recycling, it means that we cannot add organic waste to non-organic -organ waste. Some people will even add old clothes, put it in the same bin. And, you know, they will add bottles, they will add plastic material. And so we need to start the, the segregation. We need to start it. So uh, there may be a yellow bin for plastics, a green bin for um, organic waste, uh, a red bin maybe for bottles and other things we need to do that and it is a lot easier to do it in the cities you see the real villages don't have a problem because they can still dig around and put their garbage mm -hmm. you know 
but we need to really do a massive campaign and begin to deal with some of these things because they can be done. They can be okay. done. All right. So we'll go for another commercial break. When we return, we get to let you know what Ghanaians did to someone who is popular and probably felt he could just get away with some situation. Mm -hmm. When we return, I'll let you know about it. Do not go away. <laughs> And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. This time around, we were discussing the attitudinal issues that we experience here in Ghana and how it's contributed to a retrogression in our national development. And before we went to the break, I mentioned that a very popular person uh, did something and felt he could get away with it, but Ghanaian somehow spoke the right thing to the person and he came back to apologize. Earlier this week, we had this situation with Samini and a gate man at the University of Ghana. He did not have his pass, and for that reason, the security man would not allow him cross into their yard. And uh, he filmed him thinking Ghanaians were going to be on his side. Uh, director, if we can put up that footage, please. <laughs> See this guy? This guy. He didn't really go on gate there. I did go to school. I left my card for the other car inside. The guy said, no, go make a pass. Oh. See him. You see, everybody go see you, you. You be your guy, but today I go pass. Yeah. See this guy? Oh. This guy. He didn't really go on gate there. Oh. I did go to school. I left my card for the other car inside. The guy said, no, go make a pass. Oh. See him. You see, everybody go see you, you. You be your guy, but today I go pass. Yeah. So you see him making a report to Ghanaians on Twitter about how the man will not allow him to, you know, pass through the University of Ghana. And the guy was trying to do his job because he didn't see the reason why, even if you're a popular person, he should go against the rules. And when Ghanaians rose up against this popular Samini, he came back to put something up on Twitter. And what was it he said? He came back to apologize to Ghanaians. Uh, now he understands that what he did was not right, so he's apologizing and will not go about it again. He said, after my post about the incident at the security gate, I've realized the majority of you advised that I should have done the right thing. Nothing makes my case right, regardless of how many cards I have and how upset I got. Apologies to the young man doing his job. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Well, that, that's, that's that really, was really good, good of him, you know. It's, it, 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 takes, it takes a brave soul to apologize sure. and apologize openly. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's done well oh. <laughs> to accept his wrong. I, I like what he wrote. What he did. It's good. Yeah. All right. So he's oh. apologized and we are hoping that what happened to, to him is going to right send signals. the right communication. Yeah. And uh, I'd like us to talk about situations that you found Ghanaians acting right. Post it on our social media page. I'm going to read it out, okay? I was just sharing with Auntie Joyce about what happened when I was queuing for Ghana card. And interestingly, Ghanaians were very, very strict with people having to queue up. So when people queued up for them um, to be served, people were okay. And once anyone tries to cut through the line to play a, pa a, fa a fast move to be able to get served, Ghanaians always spoke up and asked the person to go, go back. back in line. Yeah. Well, let me share uh, <laughs> something that also happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was in a bit of a hurry, so I think I was breaking the speed rules. So the policeman stopped. I said, yeah. So I said, oh, and then they were watching me. Papa police, why? Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it is good to accept it when you've done wrong. Yes, I was riding in a nice car, and I, you know, most people know my face. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they saw me, oh, Auntie Joyce says, oh, but it does not make it right. It doesn't, doesn't make, make it, right. it right. You know, and uh, uh, in fact, when you say, do you know who I am? I would say, oh, so you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not for me to know who you are <laughs> if you don't know who you are. You exactly. Know. But I, I think it is good to have some humility. And this is why I'm saying Samini has done well. You know, it's taken a bit of humility for him to come and even say that Ghanaian said 
he was not doing what was right. And it's, it's, it's very good. We really need to do what is right. Mm -hmm. We really need to do. If you do what is right, the next person does what is right, I do what is right, this country will go, will, will go very far. And now that it's raining, you know, it's the cumulative effect of all that we're doing. Somebody has posted something on, I think, the Jamestown bit of the beach or so on. Honestly, the debris is... I don't know what word to use, is absolutely awful, you know. And it, we, we really need to recognize that it is little actions of ours, getting gutters choked and so on. Plus, and the engineers are going to be angry with me, but the thing is, I'd like engineers who have engineered this, these roads, mm -hmm. knowing that we have open gutters, knowing that gutters get choked, why they didn't do the kind of sloping that will let the waters drain away. And why, as city engineers and town engineers, they would allow people to build in waterways when they know that that place is a waterway, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I think these are some of the things. We should get some of our technocrats also to recognize that they are part of the problem. You know, they are mm -hmm. also part of the problem. Either a design that's gone wrong, and if they say that they designed it right, but the contractor built it wrong, then we should also get to the technocrat who approved that the contractor did it right mm -hmm. without cross-checking whether he was building according to the design that he was given, you know, and cutting corners and saying, oh, we don't have enough money and so on will cost us a lot more. Yeah. So we have to make sure that the whole chain gets done properly from the design of the road, from the building of the culverts, from the uh, contractor also doing the road itself and knowing how to slope it. Sometimes we cut through a, 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 um, a hill or something, and we don't even plant along the hill. Mm -hmm. So erosion becomes a major issue. And then the erosion comes and actually fills the storm drains, the little covets, and so the water cannot flow. Mm -hmm. So all these things are part of what we need to do. I think that uh, Minister Mwakwata, who is saying that now he will hold contractors responsible, for, I think five years or so, after they finish building the road, yeah. we really need to support him to do this. You know, we really need to support him to do this because you have to go through the full chain. And some of the engineers say that the politicians don't listen to them. So we should also be able to shape, name and shame politicians who will not listen to technical advice mm -hmm. and have the wrong things done for all of us to suffer. Name and shame technocrats who do the wrong things, name and shame, you know, others. Like Samini was shamed, yeah, you know, uh, on, on, on Twitter, on was Twitter. it? And he has had to come and, uh, and apologize. apologize. I, I think it's very important. All right. So uh, very soon we'll be opening the phone lines and then please, comments. I need you to bring them in. It's time for us to go through our comments because we just got a few minutes and then we end. So we'll go for the final break. When we return, I'll answer the phone lines. And then we wrap it up. So just stay tuned. So welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Now we are opening the phone lines. The number is right now at the base of your screen. So if you have anything to ask Auntie Joyce concerning the domestic violence issue and even with the right attitude Ghanaians need to put up to make us a better country, please put it forward. We'll really appreciate it. Yet. Let me go to our Facebook page and read out the information we've got there. I see Young Energy. He says, hello. Young Energy comes again and is asking for our number. Okay, the number is right now at the base of your screen. So please, you could give us a call. I see Fred Hassa. He says, hi, from Albania. Oh. And then, yeah, he's watching us from Albania. I see Cosby Bigbe. He says, 
thank you, Auntie Joyce. Probably is enjoying the whole conversation. They're saying <laughs> thank you, Auntie Joyce. Mm -hmm. And then people are watching us from across Africa and even the world. We've seen the one from Albania. Mm -hmm. We also have people watching us from the United States of America, from mm -hmm. the UK. Uh, coming down to Africa, we have from Madagascar, we've got from Casablanca. Oh. We also have people watching us from Ouagadougou oh. and then from Togo. And then um, coming down to Ghana, I see, oh wow, I hear we have a first caller already. Oh. Okay, hello caller. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Good evening. Please, what's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Akwara. I'm calling from Kenya. Okay, please go ahead. Mama Joyce, good evening. Good evening. Mom, I love you so much. Oh, so where have you been all my life? <laughs> oh, I have, I've, I've listened to you. I've read about you. I've, I've known you for a while now. And oh, how sweet. I, I, I've kind of love everything that you do. God bless you for being oh, our friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Hug, hug, hug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a question or that was your contribution? Um, I actually have. Okay, I have a question. Okay. Uh, Mom, ma uh, please, there's this lady I'm actually planning to um, start a life journey with. Mm -hmm. I like what how you put it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, she's past thirty, and she's a house of to someone. And I was trying to um, do the right thing by seeing the family, so we bring things. But the woman she was saying with wouldn't permit her the chance to make her any move. So we we uh, we 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 actually did everything behind her. Mm. We did not let her to know anything good, um, mm. about going on. But rather, she had it in town. And she got she got furious. Mm. So she did not want the lady to step out of the house. And I actually went to the woman to. Uh, to beg her, but she wouldn't do it. No matter how uh, long I played with her, she wouldn't do it. And the lady's family, she would also not permit them to uh, to come meet her. She wants everything to be done either by phone call or nobody to her house. So actually, things got slowed, and we have to post everything until um, advice from people um the the the, the madame's house and i want to ask it now she's been far away from me and i also have to uh make um we, we need to i i need to get to know her because now she's very far in the while i live in tema but it kind of um, a little problem. Um, I'm trying to bring her down. You can live with me for a while, and then we continue the process. Am I right or wrong? You are wrong because until you marry her, you cannot bring her to come and live with you. So is she now with her uh, parents, her own family? Uh, yes, she's yes. with her, her older and then the younger siblings. Yes, so she's now with the family. She's no longer living with this woman wouldn't allow anybody to talk to her. I don't know why the woman was behaving like that. Because if the woman, uh, if the young lady was living with her and serving her as a house help, it doesn't mean that she owned her. But you see, you cannot bring her to come and live with you because you have not married her. You haven't married her, so you can't do that. Okay. All right. So I guess you have the answer that you're looking for. And I just looked at the timepiece and I see it's exactly 9 p.m. <laughs> it's time for us to go. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're going to have to take uh, Auntie Joyce's final words and then we would call it a wrap. So let me just go to our comments and see if there are more comments. Oh, somebody saying, oh, you didn't acknowledge me. Um, 
I'm watching you from Abuja. Okay, fine. No, yeah. All right. So we acknowledge you, all Abuja people, okay? Mm -hmm. Lagos, we acknowledge you. We can see that you are around. Thank you so, so much. And then somebody is also asking, hey, Auntie Joyce, so <laughs> we are rounding up the conversation. This is going to start up a whole new conversation, <laughs> okay? All right. Yeah. So she wanted to know what your thoughts are on the cathedral conversation. That's and for another day. Yeah. Let's do it another day. All right. So please, yeah. let's just have your final words. And well, I'd like to say that we're grateful to God for marriages. And marriages are supposed to be based on love because it is love that will enable us to even raise uh, godly citizens. So homes where there's violence do not augur well for love between the parents and then love for the children because the children will be traumatized whenever they see the father beating the mother or vice versa so i would pray that when we realize that we have if you're a man and you know that you have an anger problem that you easily get angry enough to raise your hand please seek help there are people who can help you overcome this anger problem if you are a woman and you're also beating your husband you have a problem seek help because if you have children, you owe much more to the children. Besides, if you don't seek help, you might harm each other and it will create problems. So please, for the pastors who also, out of good intentions, try and match make people in church, which I don't <coughs> find anything wrong, let's help those we match make to recognize that it is just a recommendation and that as pastors, we are not forcing them to get married. And that if they find character or anything that they do not like, they should be able to voice it out. We should also allow them to get to know each other for at least two years before we get them to go and see their parents and then get married. Okay. For Ghanaians who are not, you know, acting right, please, most of us, um, claim that we know God and that we love him and that we serve him. Many of the things we're doing against our country, choking our gutters, throwing things in the drains, causing floods and so on, all these things are against what God wants. So please, let's stop it. Let's enjoy living in this beautiful country by doing what is right. Um, D uh, DCEs and so on, district assemblies, MDDs, please, you have opportunity to solve problems. Find ways of solving problems. Find ways of solving problems. Let's stop talking about the problems. Let's solve them. All right. I'll be my, let's solve problems. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's solve problems. And on that note, I'd like to show you this special gift card from Lotus Detox and Wellness Center. They are located at Laboni, and they said I should give this voucher to you, Auntie Joyce, oh. to come and have a beautiful massage and foot detox because hey. they know that you keep doing so many wonderful hey. things for Ghanaians Thank and you, you need to be pampered a little bit. I would bit. love to so be pampered. So they want to pamper you. <laughs> so the voucher is here. So I'm Thank giving you. it to Auntie Joyce, okay? Okay. Wow. So now you know that <laughs> she gave it to me. She mm -hmm. didn't keep it for herself. She didn't keep it for myself. Yes. <laughs> That's nice. All right. So we call oh. it a wrap. Do enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup for you. Bye-bye.